Levi Damien, a Raiders beat reporter, put out an article where he ranked five Raiders veterans that could lose their jobs to rookies. And today we're going to discuss that article plus more. A lot of news kind of trending in Raider Nation. Let's get right into it. Uh, Damien put it out there that he believes the first guy that could lose his job to a rookie is defensive end Chandler Jones, who could lose his job to Tyree Wilson. And that is interesting because, yeah, I mean, technically it makes sense when you got a guy like Chandler Jones, who's 33 years old, uh, compared to a Tyree Wilson, who's a rookie, who needs those reps to hopefully get even better and become that dominant superstar player. And it does make a whole lot of sense, but I would push back just a little bit. Uh, I think Tyree Wilson and Chandler Jones do play a slightly a different role in the Patrick Graham scheme. And I think roles are very important. I think the type of thing that you do as a player, uh, the type of build you may have can go a long way. And when you look at a guy like Tyree Wilson, I'd argue he's much closer to Max Crosby than he is to Chandler Jones. Now, obviously, we'll see what ends up happening. There is a good chance that Tyree Wilson obviously naturally takes over for Chandler Jones. But I do think Chandler Jones's role, right, the guy that drops back into coverage, the guy that isn't coming off the edge 100% of the time, like Max Crosby, isn't the same thing as Tyree Wilson's role, right? But it does make sense. And I could agree with it that over time, Tyree Wilson will take reps from Chandler Jones because let's be honest, in four years from today, our defensive line is going to be made up of Max Crosby and Tyree Wilson as the two guys really coming off the edge and hopefully getting after the quarterbacks together. Um, let's get into the next uh, next set of, of players. Uh, the article, uh, Damien here thinks that Austin Hooper is going to, Get replaced by rookie tight end Michael Mayer. That makes sense, right? I don't think there's any argument to be made. When you take a guy with the 35th overall pick, uh, you definitely expect that guy to replace, obviously, the other guy. Plus, keeping in mind, Austin Hooper only signed a one-year contract, so Hooper isn't really the future for the Raiders. Um, I do think that this is going to be a very, very interesting year for Mayer to really learn what he can learn from guys like Hooper, even a guy like O.J. Howard. Right, who was drafted really, really high, never panned out to be where he's kind of at. Hopefully, Mayer can pick up a lot of different things from those two guys. Um, I can agree with that one. Uh, but this third one, I definitely do not agree with. Um, the article says that Hunter Renfro will be replaced by Trey Tucker, and I totally disagree with this. You know, unless the Raiders uh, trade Hunter Renfro, I, I would expect Hunter Renfro to have a pretty big... Uh, role with the Raiders I would expect him to definitely not be replaced right I think Hunter Renfro is a unique football player and I think he's different than Trey Tucker I, I think Hunter Renfro is more so of a guy who runs routes to get open and I think Trey Tucker is more of a guy you get the ball to as quick as possible and let him make plays plus I think Trey Tucker is a is one of those guys that'll run deep a whole lot run those influence routes and things like that and Hunter Renfro, that's not his game. Hunter Renfro is not running a deep route to clear a safety, right? Never going to see Hunter Renfro doing those things. Uh, I do think they're different players. I understand that uh, Trey Tucker may have played a whole lot of slot at, in, the, in college and in the NFL. He may be expected to possibly do the same thing. I just don't see that replacement happening. I think they are completely different players. They're built differently. They're constructed differently. And I think they play different roles, right? I think Hunter Renfro is going to continue to play a whole lot for the Raiders. Plus, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to trade Hunter Renfro. And we'll get into that in just a second here. We'll talk about Renfro and, and trading him possibly. Uh, number four on this list is Brandon Faison being replaced by Jacorian Bennett. I don't agree with this one either. Um, first and foremost, Brandon Faison has came out and said he expects to start for the Raiders. He does not expect to be a backup. He does not expect to be a depth player. He expects to start. And yeah, I would argue, you know, if you're a first or second round pick as a corner, you are going to start. You're going to be the guy. But Bennett was not that, right? Bennett was pick, I believe, 104, which technically is only four picks behind Tucker. But Tucker was technically a third round pick and Bennett was technically a fourth round pick. Only four picks that separate the two, but I do believe that Bennett is not going to replace Faison, especially not anytime soon, right? I, I, at least in my opinion, I would project that Duke Shelley ends up starting for the Raiders. Remember, we picked up Shelley from the Minnesota Vikings. 
A lot of Vikings fans were super upset losing Shelly. The guy had a pretty solid uh, career over the past season or two with the Vikings, and he definitely has some upside. Uh, I think he'll be one of the two starters for the Raiders, um, and we'll see what ends up happening, right? Like, uh, there's a there's a good chance he's going to be one of the guys. Now, um, will Brandon Faison start opposite of him? Possibly. But I think Faison may end up being like that third outside corner for the Raiders. And I think Bennett will end up being like number four. I don't think Bennett's going to end up starting for the Raiders. Um, especially not over Faison. I, I don't know. Something tells me that Brandon Faison is definitely one of those guys that has uh, possibly turned his career around a little bit. And he may see a little bit more success. Uh, finally, we got Alex Bars being replaced by McClendon Curtis. Uh, naturally, being an offensive line guy, I would agree with this. But I'm going to disagree with this one as well. Um, I think I've disagreed with about three of these. So uh, the last three specifically, because the first two I could see happening. Uh, but the reason why I disagree with Alex Bars being overtaken by McClendon Curtis is because although I like McClendon Curtis, I do think he's a really, really good player with a lot of upside. I just don't see him being ready today. I just don't think he's going to be ready to jump in there right away and be the starter. Now, I may be proven wrong. I may end up... Uh, you know, regret saying this, but I just don't think a guy who was a UDFA uh, comes in day one and starts over a guy who's played in the league for a number of years. And it's not even Alex Bars, to be honest. I don't expect Alex Bars to start. I expect Dylan Parham to swap over to right guard, and I expect Natane Moody to start at left guard. Uh, that's what I would kind of expect for the Raiders. I think it's just too early for McClendon Curtis to start. Now, I do think uh, Curtis is an interesting player because. When you look at the Raiders, one of the things that our regime likes to do is have guys that can play all the positions. And Curtis technically can, right? He played guard in college, but in his final year in college, he played left tackle. So, uh, you know, that's 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 kind of going to give that guy some versatility there. Um, and I think that's something the Raiders want to develop, right? And I do think develop is the key word for Curtis. I don't think he's going to be ready to go day one. But I think going into year two, he's going to be a massive asset for the Raiders. I think we'll end up carrying him on the practice squad this entire season. Um, I just don't think he's ready to start day one. And, you know, if you guys don't know this, I've been a fan of McClendon Curtis before the Raiders brought this guy in. I, I've been a fan of this guy for like five months at this point, right? You can see the tweets. You can see the videos that I posted in the past. I'm a fan of Curtis, man. In fact, I've been a fan of this guy since I watched Cole Strange a, over a year ago, right? Cole Strange got drafted. Uh, he was the starting left guard at Chattanooga. Curtis at that point was the starting right guard. And I've liked Curtis ever since that point. Um, I just don't think he's ready to start in the NFL day one, especially going from Chattanooga in FCS school to the NFL, right? There's a whole lot of processing that has to, um, you know, allow these guys to kind of get better at Um but those are the five players that Raiders Wire thinks, you know, veterans are going to get replaced by rookies. But I do want to talk about a veteran on the Raiders team at this point, which is kind of crazy. Hunter Renfro is no longer a, a youngster, right? I think he's going to, what, year five this year? Um, but I want to talk about Renfro a little bit. You know, uh, a lot of people are saying, could Hunter Renfro be the next guy cut, the next guy traded, the next guy on the outs? We've seen a lot of guys kind of move uh, from, you know, at least that 2019 class where we got Hunter Renfro, right? We've gotten rid of a lot of guys from that class alone, right? Guys like Foster Moreau have went to the Saints. Uh, guys like Jonathan Abram are no longer here. Um, you know, Trayvon Mullen is with like the Ravens, right? So could Hunter Renfro be that next guy out of that class to be gone? Um, and I, I hate to say he can because I don't think he will be. Um, and his contract definitely isn't very favorable, especially if you trade him prior to June 1st. Um, if you guys trade or if you guys traded him prior to June 1st, you see the cap hits, uh, you get $18 million worth of cap hits. Uh, that will be dead money, right? Over the next four years, we'll have dead money for Hunter Renfro. But if we trade him post June 1st, it's not as much money, right? Um, don't get me wrong, this year we'll still incur a $13 million dead cap hit, but over the next five years, or I'm sorry, the next four years, it'll be just about a little over $5 million, right? So technically we could move on from Hunter Renfro. We will incur $18 million worth of dead cap hits. Um, I, I just don't know if 
it would be smart for the Raiders to move on from Hunter Renfro. To me, Hunter Renfro is a good football player, right? And he's a guy that, you know, he may not have 1,200 yards this season, but you don't need that from every player, right? You need guys that are role players. You need guys that could come in and do some of the little things at a top tier level. And yeah, he's getting $13 million, but... You know, Tyreek Hill's getting paid $30 million, And I don't think Hunter Renfro's anywhere near Tyreek Hill, right? And he's getting paid less than half of what Tyreek Hill is getting paid, right? I think the type of receiver Renfro is, his value is $13 million. And if you want it, you pay for it. If you don't, don't pay him. And in this instance, the Raiders have paid him. And I think it makes sense to keep him around. To me, I think the Las Vegas Raiders should keep Hunter Renfro this year. I think Renfro has upside. Again, we talked about it just a second ago. I don't think Hunter Renfro is the same type of player as Trey Tucker. I think they're completely different players. Um, and to me, it just doesn't make sense for the Raiders to move on from a guy like Renfro when, you know, he can come in this year and provide us with 60 catches, 500 yards, right? 50 catches, 400 yards, whatever it may be, right? He can provide us with that because, you know, his 40 or 50 catches, half of them are going to go for a first down. Right, the other half will get us from second and thirteen into a third and five situation. Right, Hunter Renfro is a weapon for the Raiders. It's not the same type of weapon as Tyreek Hill is. It's not the same type of weapon Devontae Adams is, but he is still a weapon for the Raiders. And honestly, I think the Raiders should keep Hunter Renfro around. I think the more weapons you have, the better. Plus, do you really want a rookie in Trey Tucker who's still learning the speed of the game, who still has to learn? All of the different route combinations still has to learn how to beat NFL corners. Do you want to throw him in day one and expect him to beat an NFL corner and for Jimmy Garoppolo to feel like, hey, this guy's not very good today? Do you want to put Jimmy Garoppolo in that situation? Because I know. I think it makes more sense instead of saying Trey Tucker run a whip route. La Hunter run for who smoked Jalen Ramsey on those routes, who smokes any cornerback, right? We saw him do it against Miami and Xavier uh, Howard, right? We saw him do that against uh, that corner, right? I think Hunter Renfro is one of those guys we should keep around. We'll see what ends up happening. Let's get into ranking the Las Vegas Raiders 2023 UDFAs. Um, guys that could actually make the Raiders roster. Now, this article here comes from Tristan Kuhn, aka Raiders Scout, 46,000 subscribers on Instagram. Uh, go follow him if you guys don't follow him already. Instagram, Twitter. Uh, he puts out really good content and uh, he put this article out where he kind of ranked the guys that he thinks will make the Raiders rosters. Uh, and I want to just kind of overlook it and just kind of go through it a little bit. Um, I think most people agree that McClendon Curtis is the guy that is most likely to make the Raiders roster among the free agent guys that we signed. I agree with him. Honestly, I 100% agree with him. I think McClendon Curtis is going to be a good football player. Again, I don't know if he'll be ready day one, but I do think McClendon Curtis will start at some point. Um, will he be on the actual active roster? It's possible. Uh, I think he'll be on the practice squad, but never say never. He may even be called up to start a little bit. Uh, I love Curtis. I think his upside is massive, and I think the Raiders did right by bringing him in. Uh, obviously, I think he projects as a guard as opposed to tackle, right? He played tackle in college. Uh, McClendon Curtis is the number one guy on the list, and for good reason. Um, surprisingly, he has Drake Thomas, linebacker out of NC State, as number two. Um, and this one's kind of interesting because uh, Tristan Kuhn says the Raiders had a need at linebacker, and it didn't really get addressed much. Uh, currently, Robert Spillane, Devine Diablo, and Luke Masterson are the projected starters. Six round pick Amari Bernie is a lock as a backup, and after that, it's a mess. Uh, Thomas is undersized and only a slightly above average athlete, but he's productive and has a nose to make plays. Uh, the four year starter is highly quali uh, high quality run defender, racking up 292 tackles, 47 tackles for loss, 19 sacks, four interceptions, and 144 stops for the Wolf. That's pretty damn impressive, uh, statistic wise. Obviously, it was at NC State. NC State isn't a bad college. They do play some good teams. Um, Jake Thomas is an interesting player. He is a guy that I do like. So I can understand how Kuhn has him ranked as number two. Makes sense to me. Uh, I could definitely see him being the guy that actually does make the roster. Last year, I think we had two UDFAs on the active roster, especially as the season kind of ended. Um, I can definitely see how that actually happens. Now, personally, I think Spillane and Diablo... Uh, will start and I think Masterson 
maybe like that wild card to end up starting. And don't sleep on Isaiah Paul Amal to maybe play a little bit more in the box. Last year, he played safety. This year, I could see him making that switch over and kind of playing in the box. Obviously, we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, but that is one of my wild card players for the Raiders this year. Um, then he has Adam Plant at a UNLV as number three. I haven't really watched this tape too much, so I'm going to have to go check him out. He has Dalton Wagner at number four. Uh, Jaden Grant at five. John Samuel Shanker at six. Jordan Perryman at seven. George Tarlis at eight. Aziz Hearn, cornerback out of UCLA at 9. Uh, that's definitely an interesting uh, ranking there. The only guy that I would be a little bit higher on is Jordan Perryman out of Washington. Um, keep in mind, the guy went from UC Davis to Washington for his final year. Uh, wasn't used to that game speed. Obviously got hurt. His body wasn't built for it, at least not yet. Um, and he didn't play a whole lot last year, but I do think he has some uh interesting stats right i i I, I think he has some interesting upside right um uh, obviously he ran a 431 i believe that was at his 40 yard uh, i believe that was at his pro day where he ran the 431 40 yard time um but the guy looks interesting on tape right uh he's definitely looks fluid he definitely looks good at, in terms of his athletic profile um but being an athlete doesn't always translate we know that to be fact right we've seen some of the best corners in the nfl run like in the four fives um but i do think he'll have some upside especially being a UDFA to do like some of the special teams type work. And then over, you know, two to three years of developing, maybe come in and, and, and play some actual reps. Um, either way, it's kind of an interesting uh, list there. Uh, let's wrap the video up talking about another rookie. Uh, if you guys have not heard, the Raiders announced they have a way defensive end Brock Martin. Uh, if you guys don't know, Brock Martin was a UDFA we picked up out of Oklahoma State. Um, this is an interesting thing that kind of happened uh you know we talked about this recently where we said hey the rookie mini camps are about to happen uh, the raiders will bring some guys in that you know they'll do their weigh-ins they'll do their check-ins the raiders will kind of look at the, these guys athletic profiles and those type of things and then we'll get a guy we'll get a couple guys that are gonna get, end up getting cut right because the raiders will realize maybe from an athletic perspective maybe from a a mental iq test type perspective these guys don't check out and they're not where we want them to be um, and then the Raiders will cut these guys and then maybe they'll tell them that you got you can come back next year uh, We need you to work on you know X Y and Z or they'll just move on all together, right? It happens all the time um, And Brock Martin ended up being that guy now. I did watch Brock Martin's tape. He does have some upside not nothing crazy um, But he did do a pretty nice job with his hands. He did do a pretty nice job with his effort And I think those are things that could translate for him, but obviously the Raiders just didn't feel right keeping him on the roster and potentially keeping him uh, around and they'll end up using that roster spot for a different position right so we'll see what ends up happening we'll see who they end up uh, picking up who they end up cutting or whatever it may be uh, but they have made a cut it isn't massive because rock martin likely wouldn't have made the roster anyways but it is kind of important to understand that rookie mini camps are a big deal you know for us uh, you know some of us probably didn't even know that the raiders had rookie mini camps but for these players who are, you know, likely it's their one and only opportunity to ever get, it's a big deal. And these guys have to put the work and they have to keep training through the draft process before mini camp starts. They got to get in and be in shape. Um, and I think the rest of the rookies are, are likely safe at this point, at least for the opportunity to have the pads and those type of things. Um, either way, man, let me know what you guys think, man. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.